United Kingdom, land of hope and glory. Who better to entrust with our nation's heritage than... Jedward? Today, those two with their hair are heading to one of the remotest parts of Britain. We're on our way to Orkney and we can't wait to rock it. Look out, Orkney! But who will be today's best tour guide? I can't remember anything. And who will be blown off course? Edward, what are you doing? Brock, 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 Brock. Our tour guiding twins go head to head. Are you guys ready to go to Orkney? Yeah! Yeah! It's Jedward's big adventure. Orkney Islands, off the coast of northern Scotland. They may be small, they may be freezing, but they're jam-packed with ancient history. The Vikings have been here, the ancient Celts have been here, and Neolithic man has been here. And for two fun-packed days, Jedward are here! We're here, Edward! Orkney! Land of the Or! Orcs? What Or? Orcs? This isn't Lord of the Rings. Look at her. It's our mission. Check it out and see what it says. Dear Jedward, welcome to Orkney. In just 24 hours time, you will each have to give a group of tours a guided tour around the islands. The winner gets their own firelit beach party, whilst the loser endures a traditional Orkney ceremony where they're soaked in treacle and bombarded by cornflakes and flour. Oh, I don't want that. John, I think we're gonna need some help. You're right, Edward. Hey, look over there. It's Barney Harwood and Sonali Shaw. Guys, get over here, we need your help. Barney, right, Sonali, come on. We need Hello. What do you guys know about Orkney? Uh, I think it's close to the North Pole, it's freezing. What do you know? I know that there are no orcs here. From what you guys have told us, I think we need to go find out more information about Orkney from the experts. So you guys relax while we go get the facts. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah! Oh dear. You worried? I'm a little nervous, yeah. Yes, Barney, I think you need to be. So, Barney will be helping John and Sonali will be on Team Edward. Each team will be given three stories which the tourists will be tested on. Really windy. Very, very windy. And I don't mean to pile on the pressure, Sonali, but Edward really needs your help as he's currently losing the series 4-0 to John and this is his last chance to redeem himself. Will it be success at last for Edward? Well, you'd better listen carefully to our first expert, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. And Lisa's going to be telling them all about the ancient burial tomb, Maze How. Boys, come on in. We go through a long passageway. Oh, I watch your hair. Wow, this is so low. Wow, it's amazing. I did not expect this to be in here. Maze How is a massive chamber tomb, probably used for the communal burial of local people. Neolithic Arcadians removed the flesh from the bones and arranged them in cells within the tomb. This meant that the living could access them, perhaps at certain times of the year, when they gathered to remember their ancestors. Dead bodies were dealt with very differently long ago. They laid them out and animals and birds were able to deflesh them as it was only dry bones that they took into here. And these were put right into the chambers. Oh, it's so sick. So you're saying that bones were buried here, not actual bodies? It was just the bones they took into here. This passageway is built so that as the sun sets on the shortest day of the year, around about the 21st of December, when the light comes in here, it glows an orange colour. But think about how magical that must have been. Lisa has a second story to tell the boys. We have what's called runic writing on the walls. Wow. These are Viking doodles. And this Viking is saying he is carving with an axe and he's a very skilled writer of runes. These look like little trees, don't they? How to find out what these letters are is that you count the branches on the one side to find out which part of the alphabet to refer to 
Then you count the branches on the other side to find the specific letter. So it's basic code breaking. I know I'm not going to be using the basic alphabet anymore. I'm going to be using all these amazing runic writing. Well, let's hope you won't be speaking in code when you show the tourists around tomorrow, John. You won't want to lose and face a horrible Orkney tradition that we'll reveal later. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Better keep listening carefully then, boys. Here's the next expert, Fiona. Hello! And she's braved the fierce winds to meet you at Orkney's most famous landmark. What is this place? This place is Scarabree. Is there some sort of town? It is. It's lots of little houses. It's a village. Scarabree was first discovered after a storm event in 1850. It shows us what life was like in a Neolithic village. Stone Age families lived there over 5,000 years ago, and for centuries these people enjoyed a good life of farming, hunting, fishing, and making jewellery and pottery. At the time, would it have been this windy? Very much so, Edward. How do they go to the toilet? We do have a drainage system, and there's little side drains that go off into corner bits that might be toilets. But wait a second, I thought the Romans started up the whole toilet thing. Oh, they're just the new boys. This is how far down it all goes. Whoa! So it shows you that they were thinking and planning. Back then, were people very, very small, like Oompa Loompas? No, they were like about my height. But if you look at the entrance, that is really low. So people had to get down like this. Once they got in the house, they would be able to stand up straight. Fiona, where's John? Well, I... Ah! <laughs> so, Fiona, you told us lots of interesting facts about this place. What interesting facts can you remember, Edder? I can't remember anything. Oh, dear. It's not looking good for Edward. Come on, Edward. You need to win this time. Edda, where are we? We're here in a field with a three big rocks. Let's see if you'll listen more carefully to the next expert, Amy. There she is. I'm going to introduce you to this beautiful landscape, one of the most important archaeological landscapes in Scotland, if not the world. <gasps> Amazing. The Ring of Brodgar is a Neolithic stone circle. No one knows for sure how old it is, but a good guess suggests somewhere around 2,500 to 2,000 BC. <laughs> the stones, along with the massive rock-cut ditch, would have taken a lot of people to quarry and build. Around it are at least 13 prehistoric burial mounds, which suggests that this was a very special place for the prehistoric inhabitants of Orkney. For an awful long time, hundreds of years probably, stones were added and taken away or moved around. Um, and so we think probably about 60 stones altogether may have been here at one stage. My favourite story about these stones is these were a group of giants and they were dancing uh, through the night, getting carried away with the music. They didn't realise the sun was coming up and, and the rock. sun turned them all to stone. Why do you think this place was built? Well, there's a good evidence to suggest that this monument is really to do with um, communicating with the ancestors with the dead. Ugh, spooky. Do you think me, me and Edward's hair resembles the stones? I'm stones so impressed. I thought it would be straight at an angle today. It's just so windy. Come on, Amy. Let's get out of here before our hair gets ruined. Jedward, a bad hair day? Never. So, the boys are more than halfway through their first day in Orkney, and so far they've learned all about Neolithic life and death at Scarabray and Maze Howe. Viking graffiti or runes, and the ancient ring of Brodgar. But will they remember it all in time for their tour tomorrow, or will those facts be gone with the wind? Time will tell, but first they have more to investigate. Next up, it's the Broch of Gurness, and with all the facts, it's Josie. She knows it. This is the Iron Age Broch of Gurness. Broch? Broch. 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 Burner. Gurness. 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 Brock of Garnis. Brock of Garnis. Okay, yeah, okay, great, okay. Glad we got that clear. Brochs are unique to Scotland. The Brock of Garnis is thought to be a defensive tower that was surrounded by an Iron Age settlement built somewhere between 500 and 200 BC. The Brock would have been home to a wealthy and powerful chieftain. The Vikings reused the site for a burial in the 9th century. Yeah, let's go see it. Run! Josie, come on, lead the way! Come on, Josie! Hurry up, you three. It looks so cold. So here we are, boy. Whoa! This is actually where it all happened. So, Josie, what can you tell us about this building? Do you know what this is here? 
That's is it a foot bath that you put your feet in and you sit like this and someone cleans your feet? Could have been a spa, but one of the most exciting things it could be is they would heat a hot stone on the fire and then they would put it in the cold water so they would poach their fish or cook their meat. There would have actually been two floors. Amazing. And there'd be steps up here. <gasps> Josh, what is this? Well, this is the mysterious well. What if it was a dungeon? It could have been, for all we know. What if they locked me and John in there? So that might be an idea. Yeah, it's tempting, but we're not allowed to. I mean, who'd guide the tourists around tomorrow? Well, that's it. Time's up at the Brock of Gurness. The day is drawing to a close, but the boys have time for one more stop on their tour of Orkney. And here are their next experts. Oh, Vikings. Hello. This time, they've headed for the beach. And, oh, um, they seem to have grown some moustaches for the occasion. Don't ask me why. Your guess is as good as mine. Blimey, what's going on? Hey! Hey! Now, you guys Vikings? We are Vikings. Why do the Vikings come to Orkney? To control the trade routes, to control the shipping, and to make lots and lots of lovely silver. According to the sagas, the Vikings were raiding Orkney in the 11th century, though we do not know when they first settled in Orkney. We do know that the Vikings were raiding monastic sites elsewhere in Britain as early as the late 8th century because monks recorded these attacks. As Orkney is close to Scandinavia, it is likely that they were present here at this time too. In the 13th century, Orkney was part of Norway, and many of today's Orcadians are descendants of the Vikings. And what type of tactics did you guys use to take over countries? We introduced close-packed formations where Shield. the shields were interlocked. Hit the shields! Run into the shield! Push, and you're like, no! Push, and, you're like, and they win! Yeah. Oh, that was pathetic, boys. Now, every good Viking needed a good Viking wife. So you're, you're showing us stuff that they would have done back then. I would cook, and I would run the household, and I would organise the farm. At the moment, I'm doing some tablet weaving. Could women fight as well if they wanted to? They wouldn't have fought on the battles, but I can handle a sword and I can handle a bow if I have to. That's amazing. Well, you better watch out then, boys. Go and learn those facts or she'll be after you. So that's it. End of day one at Orkney. The winner tomorrow will get a bonfire party on the beach and the loser will face an unpleasant Orcadian tradition which involves being covered in treacle, flour and cornflakes. Oh, no! Yeah, sticky. Can Edward finally avoid this fate? I can't remember anything. Well, you better try, Edward, because it's getting dark. Time to head back to Jedward HQ to catch up with their teammates and prepare for tomorrow's tour. And for some reason, they're all talking about soup. Mozo. Mi miso. Miso. Miso soup? No, it wasn't miso soup. That's what I thought it was as well the first right. time she told me. The bora. Bora something. The bora. The, the bora. bora. It's like a soup. Bora. It's a broth. Bro. Bro. Oh dear. So we're doing something about Vikings. I'm going to have to remember all the stuff I learned at school about Vikings because you haven't told me that much. Why would you up on the bed? This is what they did back then. They went to May's house, they got loads of crazy bones, threw them in, and so we got to explain to Taurus what it was like back then. So that's a coffin. No, the and this is a box. box. Are we going to win this? Yes, we are. We're going to... High five. Hmm. Less jumping on the bed and more sleeping in the bed, I think, teams, if you want to give good tours tomorrow. Morning! And it's a cold one! Our would-be tour guides are complaining already. So we're here and John is heating himself up with the heater. Guys, you don't realise how cold it is, OK? It's like Antarctica. 7am and the puzzled tourists are on their way. I'm really excited and I hope today is going to be really fun because I don't know what's going to happen. I'd like my tour guide to be young and nice and funny. If our tour guide was my history teacher, I'd be really annoyed because it would be like really boring. I agree. Good. That's settled then. They need to be young and not boring. Well, we can't promise you the world's best tour guides, but they are young and they're definitely not boring. Who'd have thought an ancient burial mound would make such a good hiding place? Get your hair down. Hair down. It's a big giveaway. Nervous would be a good word this morning. Edward just wanted to jump on the bed, which is great fun, but not great prep for being a tour guide. I know, so far, 
that there's lots of stones. Right. There was lots of wind. Yeah. And um, and there was a skull here in history at some point. Right. And so I think they're going to go away knowing loads. You reckon? I don't know anything. Oh dear. Oh well. Time to run down a big hill. What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind you, don't fall. Oh no, too late. All right, guys. I'm John. He's Edward. Scary are. Yeah. All right, guys. Did you guys like our entrance? I totally fell. <laughs> We're gonna need a celebrity guest. So give it up for Bernie Harwood and Sonali Shah. <laughs> Sonali. Such an elegant entrance. Now. She's Sonali, and I'm Edward, and together we are Ed and Ali! I'm John, that's Barney, and together we are Journey! <laughs> are you guys ready to go to our org day? Yeah! Right, let's get out of here, come on! I'm really, really excited that Jedward are our tour guides. It's going to be an awesome day. It was really exciting when they ran down the mound, so like we could know who it was. It's Team Johnny up first with the story of Maze Howe. All right, guys, okay, Maze Howe is an ancient burial mound because it was built to bury old, dead, bones, bodies. No, that's wrong. Yes, it is. Try again. Is it because they wanted to build... <laughs> I'll get it together! Because they want to bury dead bodies here at the burial mounds. No, bones, just bones, John. That's right. No, it's not. Me and Barney are going to demonstrate a Neolithic funeral. Back then, they did not just bury the dead bodies. They used to rip off all the flesh off the bodies, resulting in crazy... Ugh. Uncle Jim's dead flesh! Actually, they didn't rip the flesh off. They left the bodies out for the birds. They put the dead bodies in the tomb and said their goodbyes. Who wants to go inside? Me! Me! Me. These are the burial chambers. This is where the people used to pay tribute to their ancestors. That passageway behind you that we came down is set out deliberately so that it faces the sunset on the shortest day of the year. Who wants to recreate that special moment, the shortest day of the year? Me. Yeah! yeah. All right, let's do this, Kay. This is the mirror, Kay. And we're now going to angle it on the sun and reflect it all the way down the passage. <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a Neolithic man? Oh no, it's a pair of bunny ears. Well, that's enough messing around. That was a good effort there from John and Barney, but did they get the facts across to the tourists? Or was it all just rabbit, rabbit, rabbit? <laughs> we'll find out later on. But for now, let's see if Sonali and Edward can get off to a good start too. They're telling the story of Maze Howe's Viking graffiti. The Vikings came in here and they wanted to tell the rest of the world that they were here. They signed their names here. Do you guys know the alphabet? Yeah. Want to sing it? <laughs> a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh no, it's the wrong alphabet, Edward. You're meant to be talking about the runic alphabet. At the time, they didn't have that alphabet. Oh, thank goodness for that. They had something that was called ruins. Runes, man, runes. Try to get it right or it'll be a hope of winning that'll be in ruins. This type of ruins is called twig ruins. See those little lines at the sides? They look like trees. It's like text messages on stone walls, because obviously mobile phones weren't around then. They were writing about treasure. Sometimes they were writing about girls who was quite pretty, that kind of thing. Like, what would you write? I'd be like, hey, this is Edward. Here's my number, so call me maybe. OK, we can't write on the walls, but let's still make a rune. Who wants to make it on runes? Let's go! Rune. rune. Now, what are they spelling? Rune. Um, Team Edward to win? Oh, very clever. John and Barney may have something to say about that. They're next at Scara Bray. Welcome to Scara Bray, a Stone Age village from the Neolithic era, covered in sand for 5,000 years and discovered in 1850. Please welcome a good friend of mine, John. Mr. Edge man, no speak English. So I'm going to translate for him. <laughs> so John Stone Age man lived here with his family. Okay, great. What did you do for for a living? Oh, there's a cow there. Okay. He's a, he's a farm yard animal. John was a farmer. The ears. Oh, the jewelry. They they also made jewelry here as well. <laughs> I think we're now talking about. He ate a lot of meat in his diet and it had 
<laughs> certain consequences. I'm guessing that's what that was. Um, he, you might think the way John's playing this uh, was a little daft. They were actually very intelligent. They had drainage systems here mm. before the Romans even thought about it, and the village they built lasted them 600 years. Do you want to go and see it? Yeah! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> the story of Scarabray Bray there told by John and Barney in their own unique way. I really enjoyed the tour of Scarabray. Bray. I enjoyed John dressed up as a caveman, it was really funny. <laughs> But was all the clowning around a distraction for the tourists? Will they remember all the facts about Scara Bray and life in a Neolithic village? Or will the sight of John pretending to go to the toilet be all that lingers in their memory? <laughs> for the tourists' sake, I hope not. We'll soon find out when they take the big test later. But for now, on with the tour. Next stop for Edward and Sonali, it's the Ring of Brodgar. Sorry, what are you wearing? Are you sure about this? Of course I'm sure. I've seen it in the movies. Lord of the Rings, Gandalf. I'm not sure he was a Neolithic priest. I'm not sure this is right. Anyway, maybe they won't notice it's wrong. I'm sure we'll be fine. Welcome to a sacred place full of ancient stones built. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see that again, please? Haha! <laughs> Love it! In your face! So, as you were saying? Built in Neolithic times without the help of modern technology. And Yo, Mammy, what's up, yeah? I don't know, I'm someplace called Bogner. <laughs> Brodgar! This is the Ring of Brodgar. Yeah, Ring of Brodgar, Mammy. Give me that. Hi, Mommy Jedward. Can he call you back? What I want you guys to do is close your eyes, take yourselves back to a time that was Calmer, simpler, quieter. Edward, what are you doing? You're going to wake the dead. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wake up the dead. Who wants to wake up the dead with me? Oh, yeah, let's all go for it. Let's, let's go. go. Here. I am a child. 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 Hiya, Pacha! Hiya! Oh, sorry, I was really enjoying that. Trying to wake the dead is more fun than you think. Next up, John and Barney are at the Brock of Gurness for a special edition of Iron Age Cribs. Hey there and welcome. I am John Grimes and this is the Brock of Gurness. a place for a wealthy and powerful chieftain who goes by the name of... MC Iron Age. How's it going? This is my crib, yeah? They got yourself massive. That is my half, yeah? That's where the fire was, yeah? And we was here one night, yeah, thinking of names for bands, and we had some stones, and we were rolling the stones like that, and we thought, hey, that's a great name. And we came up with McFly. What is above us? You got an amazing roof. That's my skylight I had put in, yeah. Originally, yeah, that was like the first floor here. This is where I cooked all my fish, yeah. It's like a well hot cooker, that. Also, yeah, I built myself my own little village outside the house where my homies want to live. You as well gonna love this, yeah. I had it all made for all my friends. They're not here now because they're on tour, yeah. That is like all my houses, and this is like a street, yeah. But listen, I gotta do a little call on the video phone there with my mate. 50 pence, he's my favourite rapper, yeah. Oh, hey. So if you could all get off my land. Charming. That's okay. Well, we were off to the beach now anyway. But where's Edward? At the start of the 9th century AD, there were some new visitors to this very island. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm a Viking! <laughs> I hate to break it to you when you've made such an effort, but Vikings didn't have helmets with horns like this. Oh. <laughs> I'm a bloodthirsty Viking! And I am here to take all your gold and take all your family and go back home! <laughs> yeah, that's not quite how it went down. They were really violent when they first came here. Then they decided that they really liked it here and then they just decided to, like, settle down and start families and stuff. Hmm, so, no helmets, not always bloodthirsty. Let's try again. Rawr! I'm a bloodthirsty Viking and I'm going to settle down here and have families and have friends! This doesn't sound, like, very viking -y. I thought that I killed people and went crazy. I didn't know they were just civilised people that lived here. They're kind of pathetic. Who are you calling pathetic? Uh-oh! You, you bunch of softies! Softies, really? Oops. Oh, crumbs. Ah! That'll teach you not to upset a Viking, Edward. Loads of descendants of Vikings still live here. And I'm going to give you a tip. Don't anger those descendants, because they can run fast. Ah! Poor Edward. 
Well, that's it. That's all the tours over, and as the sun sets on the broch of Bersay, it's time for the tourists to take the big test. They'll be asked two questions on each of the stories. For each correct answer, there's a point in it for the team that told that story, and the team with the most points will win. Did we get the facts across, do you think? Yeah, we totally did! I think we did. I think we did this, okay? <laughs> I, I think we did this! I think we did this! I think you did an amazing job, okay? Ugh. I'm really proud of you, okay? Bring it in for Jed Ho. Come here, come here, come here, bring it in. Come. Oh, thank oh, you. No, I think. Nelly, can you hear those waves? I can. Those waves are clapping for us right now because we did such a good job. Do you think we've won? I think we've won. So, both teams are confident then, but are they right to be so sure of themselves? How much will they remember about Vikings? Will they recall what Maze Howe was used for? These are the burial chambers. And how much will come back to them about Scara Bray? <laughs> Not that bit, I hope. I really want Barney and John twin because they're really funny. I really want Edward to win because they make me laugh the most and they're really funny. I think they're both great and they're both good fun. So far, John has won every single show in the series, but can Edward finally stop it being a total whitewash and prove that he too has what it takes to be a tour guide? The sun has set and night has fallen on Orkney. No one's going to bed until we find out who's won the final big adventure this series. Amy is back with the all important results. Go on, Amy, the suspense is killing me. So here we are at the end of Jedward's Big Adventure here in Orkney. It's time to find out who are the winners and who are the losers. Edward and Sonali's team, 54 points. <laughs> That's really good. John and Barney, 22 points. Oh, yeah. Edward's done it at last! Well done, Team Edward! We won! You lost! L O S E lost! -E -E oh dear, you might finally be a good tour guide, Edward, but your spelling's rubbish! Get ready for that treacle, Team Johnny. How are they going to cover us in treacle if we're running? Hey, come back, you cowards! Get back here! Okay, we'll go past it! <laughs> Don't worry, Amy, you tried your best. Go for it, Edward. Sweet revenge at last. Sweet, get it? No? Oh well. Let's get on with this ancient Orcadian tradition. Oh, 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 oh. I feel so loser it. No, you can no. ah. It's normally done to a groom before his wedding, and no one's quite sure of its origin, but it's definitely mean. Oh. And fun. I feel like a cake. We created modern art here. <laughs> we won! Oh. Victory party! Guys! Edward! Oh, no, it's not funny! I woke up this morning at 6 o'clock, did the tour, I rocked it, won. This is the lifestyle, you know? Yeah. That, but our arms are tied together, I can't even help you out. Let's sing a campfire song. Oh. One, two, three! Come with it us, there's so much to discover. A crazy adventure with me and my brother. We'll dig up things that'll freak you out. This is Jedward's big adventure. Yeah.